More turmoil at the New York Times. Last week, it took heat from the left and right for changing a front page headline on President Trump's speech following the recent shootings in El Paso. Uh, and Ohio. Now the newspaper has demoted its Washington deputy editor for controversial tweets about race and politics. New York Post columnist and Fox News contributor Michael Goodwin is here, and he says the Times has an ethics issue. He joins us now. In your piece, you, in your piece, you write, quote, uh, um, Trump's election infuriated the Times, and the paper's coverage shows it is determined he will not get a second term. Every article is an opinion. And negative. Right. Well, look, I think if you read the Times any day from front page to last, the sports, the cultural pages, the television coverage, it's all anti Trump. And it's right in the headlines, it's not subtle, it's right up front every day. And I think this is a total corruption of journalism now. This is no longer about covering the news, this is about having an agenda, a political agenda, a cultural agenda, and, uh, and, uh, and an educational agenda. And it's just throughout the paper. And I think that the old standards of fairness, that somehow you at least look at the other side, you let the reader draw the conclusions, and we're not just talking about the opinion pages. We're talking about the news pages, the front page. I think it's, it's just lost its way now in its hatred for the president. Well, here is the, uh, here's the latest dust-up, let's call it that. Yeah. Right? A week and a half ago, here was the headline, Trump urges unity versus racism. This, now, this follows El Paso and Dayton, Ohio. Right. So this is a Monday. Sorry, it's a Tuesday. Right. Uh, that lived for a very short time because they changed the headline to assailing hate but not guns. If you go back to headline number one, Trump urges unity versus racism, is that accurate? Yes, it is accurate. It, it's somewhat benign, but this was a day of national mourning and grief. And the president, I thought, touched on all of the issues. It was a very sober speech. I thought it was it was fitting for the event. And, and obviously, the white supremacy thing. What well, then, yes. then, then, Michael? In your analysis of this, why is that first line not good enough for the New York Times? Because it was deemed insufficiently hostile to the president. And there was a, a Twitter uproar. There were people in the paper who insisted that the headline be changed, and it was changed between editions. Very unusual to take a, a whole different tone in your headline between editions. Not only that, an apology for it came yes, from the editor. That's right. And the, the, poli the editor uh, convenes a staff meeting because everybody is yeah. upset. He, he describes it as an effing mess. Uh, you know, as though, and, and I write that the headline writer is apparently now being shamed within the paper. Uh, the editor says he feels sick, he, he feels terrible about this. I mean, my goodness, what is going on there? Well, the, like, the inference is that they want their staff to be more aggressive against this administration. Yes, I, I, th I think it's more than just aggressive, however. I think it is you must have a negative critical tone every day on everything. This is now a party line. This is throughout the paper. That's where I think you see the signs that uh, the uh, traditions of fairness have totally broken down. There's no call anymore for fairness. There is simply, we don't like Donald Trump, we hate him. We supported Hillary Clinton. We loved Barack Obama. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure Donald Trump does not get four more years. I mean, that is not journalism. 2020 is quickly approaching. How do you see their coverage the next well, several I, months? Yeah, look, I, I think that they, they will pick a Democratic candidate at some point, and they will run with that candidate. They will be the what I call the media handmaiden, the propaganda arm of the Democratic Party, there's trying this, to defeat the president. There's this fellow, Jonathan Weissman, age 53, works out of Washington, right? He's a deputy right. editor. Uh, he's been demoted for the New York Times, demoted for some of his tweets. Right. How come? Well, it, it, as I gather, some of his tweets were were against uh, Rashida Tlaib and uh, Elon against. Omar. Yes, they, and he was he was arguing with them. Now, you know, many times reporters are on Twitter saying very caustic things about the president. They don't get demoted. Mm -mm. Only the one who is sort of breaking ranks 
uh, with the others. He's, wow, that's he, how you see it. That's how I see it. I mean, look on Twitter. You will find all the Times reporters on Twitter all the time. They say things that they don't put them in the paper necessarily, but they're, you know, disparaging the president. As soon as he says something, there's a Twitter storm. Uh, well, let's, so let, let, let's watch it and see yes. how it develops, yes. okay? Great to have you from the New York Thank Post, you. Michael Goodwin. Thank, Thank you, Michael. You. Pleasure.